This is Scarbro. Um, this is Scarbro. <clears throat> uh, yeah, well, uh, you know the drill. It's a show. I talk about what's good and what's horrible. Um, I, uh, I have opinions of, of varying popularity. Uh, you know, an example of a good thing on this show would be uh, Fidel Castro. Um, not everyone agrees with that, uh, but I do. He's the only politician I liked. Uh, so, um, today though, we're not going to talk about Fidel Castro. Um, we'll save that for another episode. Let's, uh, last time we talked about Stanley Kubrick, um, this time, uh, let's talk about another director, another two directors, actually. Um, and that is the brother partnership, uh, the holy, uh, brother partnership of the Cohen brothers. Um, Joel and Ethan Cohen, I believe their names are. Um, look, all I know is that they don't make bad movies. Um, they're not boring. They're not lame. Uh, although, I mean, I have not seen Macbeth. I heard that was lame. And I didn't care for Hail Caesar. Um, but for the most part, they don't fucking miss. Um, they are the most distinctive, uh, consistent, consistently funny. Even when their movies are not supposed to be funny, they're still funny. Um, you see that in fucking, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Um, you see that in uh, No Country for Old Men, which is kind of an outlier for them. I think normally their thing is to take like a classic story, like one that maybe exists in the public domain, like um, the story of uh, the Odyssey is, oh, brother, where art thou? Um, but their adaptation of Cormac McCarthy, May He Rest in Peace, uh, his uh, his classic book, No Country for Old Men, um, is dark. Uh, it's serious, but it's also very funny at times. And if you are the type of person who catches on to that type of thing, uh, if you're the type of person who realizes that American Psycho is the greatest uh, dark comedy uh, of the 90s, honestly, it, 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 it's better than American Beauty better than fight club uh it's great um yeah uh the fucking the the cohen brothers good people um I, maybe they're not good guys i don't know a lot of great directors are assholes i know this about them and i kind of respect it in their case they don't allow for improvisation uh on set they are very um, and I, I think they have to be um, in order to make the type of comedy that they make, which is um, it has an indefinable quality to it. There's just certain tropes that are just very Coen Brothersy. There's always some kind of like store employee that looks ridiculous. You have the guy at the Woolsworth in uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou who throws out uh, – uh, George Clooney and says, stay out of the Woolsworth or whatever. Um, you have the guy, uh, behind the counter. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, uh, um, raising Arizona, but there's a scene where, uh, Nicholas Cage robs a convenience store. And the guy behind the counter is just this skinny, dorky looking acne covered face, uh, teenager. And he pulls out, just a fuck like a desert eagle or something um but you you see those types of things constantly also in a coen brothers movie i don't know if you've ever noticed this but the dialogue um the people in those movies they do not uh stick to the point they meander they forget they write it into the actual text uh that they the that they get mistake, they make mistakes, uh, and say incorrect things constantly and lose their train of thought. Um, and I absolutely, it kills me every time. Uh, I don't, you remember in, uh, um, uh, Big Lebowski 
when uh, John Goodman is talking about uh, marmots or whatever, and and he's talking about the the nihilists um, who had the pet weasel, the pet marmot, or whatever, and uh, he, he's making some point about nihilism, but he also he trails off onto uh, this side point where he's like, um, you know, uh, having an amphibious rodent or what he i don't even think he says rodent uh within city limits it, he says something like that i'm paraphrasing but it's just this random diatribe and it's just it's beautiful because that's how human beings talk we make mistakes constantly we forget things we lose our train of thought and no one writes dialogue like that besides them um and yeah i mean I just love them. I love Fargo. Fargo has funny parts in it that I just rewatched it. And um, it's one of those movies where you can watch it a hundred times and you'll notice something uh, that will be funny to you this time, even when it wasn't last time around. Um, They're just, they're so good at making human beings do embarrassing shit. Uh, and they just they don't shy away from the cringe at all. Uh, in the Coen Brothers uh, Fargo, I, what stood out to me this last viewing was um, the the weird random side plot where the Asian guy hits up Francis McDormand and tells her this whole story about how his wife died, and he tries to sit by her at the the buffet restaurant. And she says, no, I think I'd rather you sit over there. It's the most uncomfortable thing, and it has nothing to do with the plot. Uh, and I just, I love that. Thank God uh, there are people out there that make movies that are not predictable and that contain that kind of um, just moment, magical moment. All right, so you get it. I like the Coen brothers. I have a a, a passionate, deep, long-standing love for uh, the work of the Coen brothers. Um, <clears throat> I also rewatched recently the uh, very popular series uh, Taken. Actually, the, I mean, I just watched the the first movie, which I had seen before. Um, but what an interesting blockbuster Taken is, no matter how you look at it. Um, for a little bit of context, Taken is this spy thriller, and it's a it's just the most basic bitch American action story um, about. Uh, you know, a badass who's a reluctant hero. He's a former CIA agent. And uh, his daughter gets sex trafficked. Um, it's made by the same guy who made The Professional as well, which need I mar- remind you, uh, The Professional uh, is a film about a uh, an assassin who forms this very uncomfortable in hindsight i and it to the point where i have no idea how people were on board with it uh when it came out but this weird relationship between a grown man and a 12 year old girl played by natalie portman and um to add to this narrative the director which is this french guy uh, at the time when he made the professional was dating a fucking 15 year old. Um, so that's uh, for background. That's the guy who made uh, taken the, the, the mind behind taken. Um, so if you watch taken, it's uh, yeah, you have Liam Neeson who plays this old badass former CIA agent and it's hilarious because if you watch that movie they start the movie with this stupid fucking interaction where Liam Neeson is at 
uh, some kind of electronic store, and he's deal. They they specifically show you him him dealing with a guy in a turban just to make sure that you're like, wait, so okay, this guy is not racist. He's a former CIA uh, hitman, but he's not racist. Um. So they show you, yeah, they show you him dealing with this guy in a turban, and it's like, oh wow, yeah, he he must be a good dude. Um, and then they also show you his uh, his wife and her uh, or his former wife, his ex wife, and she has moved on. She's married um, this very very wealthy man, and they're having this birthday party. And uh, Liam Neeson shows up and is immediately just kind of cucked by the rich guy. Um, and then uh, where it gets really funny to me, um, and this is just so on brand for this type of, this is a movie that's made for boomers to make them inspired uh, to whatever, stand up out of the the recliner and and think that they can defend themselves and all this shit. That's what these movies are for. Um, when you have an elderly man like Liam Neeson playing a, a CIA, uh, whatever, whatever the fuck he's supposed to be. Um, but okay. So the funny part, uh, Liam Neeson gets, uh, like he goes home and he, he has like this party, this beer sesh with the boys, and all of them are former CIA hitmen, and they're doing this new job. They're doing, uh, they're trying to convince him to go out and uh, be a bodyguard for this fake uh, pop star at a concert. Um, and it's it's just like it shows them just like being good old boys and just acting like everybody's dad around here. Um, and you can, I, when you're watching this movie, you can just feel like the intent and the intent is to comfort very, very stupid, uh, wanting to believe in themselves, desperate to believe in themselves, boomers. Um, and then, uh, you have the daughter, uh, the plot thickens, the daughter, um, gets to go to France uh, at the behest of her father, who, because he was a CIA agent, knows how dangerous the world is, and he he does not like the idea of her leaving the country, which is also identifiable uh, as an emotion for probably a lot of dads in the United States. Um, all this to say that uh, sex trafficking, of course, it's real, um, uh, but it is it's just it's very hilarious the type of fear that this movie plays on um, just to trigger boomers, basically. Uh, so, yeah, she gets to go to France. She gets abducted uh, immediately, just immediately uh, right off the airplane. His daughter gets abducted by, uh, I, I don't remember what country they decided to pick on. I think like Albanian or some. I whatever some like uh, Soviet sounding guys uh, abduct uh, uh, Liam Neeson's daughter, and uh, at which point Liam Neeson has this uh, uh, you know it's an iconic scene people love it and they reference it constantly but um, he has this conversation with the sex trafficker that's about to abduct his daughter where he says. I uh, I don't know who you are, but I am someone who can make it uh, make life very difficult for someone like you, you know. And um, I don't know, man. I just I watched it, and it's one of those movies where like the success of it is so depressing. Like the that was the bi that movie was not only a blockbuster and made uh millions and millions of dollars but enough to justify multiple installments that were all successful and i believe a goddamn tv show um and i don't know there's something about that where i i watch something like that i read about how popular it is and i just want to die um what the fuck is wrong with people
why is that popular? Also, why don't people just listen to me? Um, I don't know. I feel like this show is a lot better than Taken. It's got better politics, that's for sure. Do people? Why do people still? Uh, people that have access to the same Wikipedia that I do, um, they still like the CIA or or what? You know, they still are comforted by the fact that the CIA exists. How? You you can read about it. Read w- about what the CIA has done. Do it sometime. Read about Indonesia. That's a good um, starting place, honestly, because a lot of people don't know what the CIA did in Indonesia. Read the Jakarta Method, um, groundbreaking book about that very event. And I'm referring to, of course, the event in the early 60s where the CIA uh, uh, orchestrated the mass murder of over a million Communist Party members uh, in Indonesia. And I'm not talking about military people either, just people who had, um, uh, you know, the audacity to be in the Communist Party. Um, and this is something that is not covered in history at all, but it's right there. The facts are right there. It's not disputed. It's not a conspiracy. Um, And the CIA did that by bringing people over uh, to the state of Kansas, by the way. Look it up. They trained mercenaries, well, they they trained military personnel from Indonesia. They brought them to Kansas, uh, westernized them, sent them back, and ordered the hit on uh, all these innocent people. Um, there's also a documentary about it called the, or, uh, yeah, I think it's a documentary, The Act of Killing. Um, yeah, good good one. That might be Werner Herzog or whatever. I I, I don't know. Good guy. Um, Indonesia. Yeah, I said we wouldn't talk about Cuba, but I, surprise, Indonesia. Um. I think uh, that that'll be it for this episode. I appreciate you listening to uh, my rantings, and uh, I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.